And so I decided to take myself to the A&E. Uh, in fact, a friend drove me to the A&E because my arm was kind of a, like, up by my shoulder here. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to another video. So today I wanted to do a little bit of a sit down video where I talk about a topic that I've been thinking a little bit about recently, uh, and that is injuries. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about injuries that I've had myself, how um, to prevent injuries, or at least how I've prevented injuries. And then if you do get some kind of injury, how to recover from it and how to, to respond. Obviously, it depends on the injury, but how to respond and how to recover whilst, I suppose, keeping fit, maintaining yourself uh, and recovering well. So that's what today's video is going to be all about. If you enjoy this video, make sure you give it a like hit that like button below. Uh, if you want to know anything more about my recovery process or uh, how I avoid uh, injuries, then comment down below. And if you're new to the channel, please make sure you subscribe. Also, if you haven't already done so, go check the link in the description of this video to go and follow me on Instagram. Right guys, let's get into talking about injuries. So, I wanted to start this video off by talking a little bit about the injuries that I've had, the little snags, the, the niggles, the muscle cramping, the pains, and any actual injuries that have put me out, because I think it's important for me to address this video and to come at this topic um, from a place of experience. So that's what I'm gonna do. So, if I start with like the worst injury I've had, uh, and I wanna sort of put a caveat to that, that I've not really had any major injuries, I've never had any surgeries or anything like that. Um, but the worst thing I've had was I dislocated my clavicle. Now clavicle is obviously your collarbone, it's what sort of connects the, the upper sh shoulder here. A lot of people break them and need them, you know, need surgery to repair them. I was fortunate enough that mine didn't break. It just basically all the tendons and ligaments and stuff in the tip of my shoulder that holds my clavicle down popped up and they all snapped. But it came through a jiu-jitsu accident, essentially. I was doing a demonstration with a, a few other jitsuka. We were all instructors, we were of a senior level, and it was a, a pure incident. I had a pickaxe handle, believe it or not, which is a bit like a large, heavy baseball bat, and we were doing a demonstration where I was attacking one of my fellow jitsuka. He threw me and we both landed on the tip of my shoulder. Now, normally this would be a perfectly sort of normal technique. It's something that we do regularly. We've done it a couple of times already in that session, but the landing just didn't go very well. I landed basically on the tip of my shoulder and him holding onto my arm as we landed, he put obviously his weight forward. So my weight and some of his went through my shoulder. I kind of fell and just crumpled into, into my shoulder and all that pressure gave out in sort of the weakest part, which was the clavicle. Now, I didn't actually feel a load of pain. It wasn't like what I would assume a break would be, where there's it breaks and instantly you're in agony. It didn't hurt, but instantly I felt that there was something wrong. My whole shoulder kind of tensed up and went a bit numb, and I just knew that something was wrong. It just didn't feel right. Whereas normally from a throw like that, it would be a really clean break fall. I would feel great. I'd be able to get back up again. It would be fine. And even when you have a bit of an awkward fall, where you sort of you go, oh, that was a bit, that wasn't very nice. This was different. So basically I stood back up again. I took myself off of the mat and I just, it just felt a bit odd. I kind of felt like I was shrugging. Uh, my my sh shoulder just felt, it just felt a bit odd. So I decided to take myself to the A&E. Uh, in fact, a friend drove me to the A&E because my arm was kind of a, like, up by my shoulder here. <laughs> and um, I got a scan, which I will show you now and they agreed that it, it had indeed, my clavicle had sort of, they, they call it dislocated. It's not like a, a standard joint dislocation where if you were to take like your actual shoulder joint where the ball of the ball and socket pulls out, it wasn't like that. It was literally a case that it disconnected from where it should be. And there are different phases of clavicle dislocation. Mine was like a phase two or something, which meant that it wasn't bad enough that it needed surgery. And the surgery for a dislocated clavicle, depending on how bad it is, they essentially have to reattach all the tendons and pull it back down again, so they kind of strap it back down. I was fortunate enough that it wasn't that bad. The severe clavicle dislocations, the clavicle can actually like come out of the skin or can go down into your pec, um, but it wasn't that bad. But they gave me some strong medication and like the following week was horrendous. I mean, I had to keep my arm in a sling. Any movement of the shoulder just made me feel sick and it put me out for, any, any real sort of proper sport, it put me out for about three or four months um, because I couldn't lift my arm anywhere above my shoulder and, and the rehabilitation was quite slow. 
So that was my worst injury. I will talk a little bit about how I was able to recover from that in a bit. Uh, but yeah, that was the worst thing that I've had to deal with. In terms of more common injuries that I've had to deal with, being a sort of martial artist doing jiu-jitsu, we do a lot of joint locking. Um, I have received a number of hyperextensions where uh, a joint, typically the elbow, if we're doing arm locks, the elbow is hyperextended, so it's gone just past the point where it, that it should, but not enough for it to break. And that that ends up with you having a very sore elbow. All of the sort of, it's a, there's a lot of bruising that happens. All of sort of the ligaments and things that all held your, your elbow joint in place, they just strained. And the only real way to deal with that is to strap your elbow up and to avoid any um, further extension movements. Broken toes, bit of a standard doing martial arts. You kick something, kick someone wrong, you hit a pad incorrectly, you stub your toe. That's happened more times than I can even count. But yeah, and obviously then like, you know, wrist issues. If you hit something wrong and you jar your wrist, I've had that happen quite a few times. And then the other thing I suppose from running has been uh, sort of shin splints. I've done uh, a number of different runs where I've ended the run and my shins have been have felt completely shattered. They've felt so bruised and I've needed to like cold and heat therapy them to just recover them. So uh, so yeah, I've received a few injuries like that and a few nicks and knacks, like I say, a few bruising, but otherwise I've been quite lucky. Now in terms of how you actually get an injury and this kind of links into how to avoid getting injured. There are a couple of ways of, of being injured. Um, I think the most common one is failure to warm up properly. That's one common one, especially with like small things, like if you pull a shoulder or, you know, you feel there's a slight niggle in your lower back or, or something like that. If you go too quickly into a workout or if you are doing something like a martial art and you don't warm up effectively enough, then your muscles are nice and cold and then you go one step too far and you exert yourself and your muscle is naturally gonna pull tight. Um, that is typically what I have had when it's come to mind little things. Like, you know, there have been so many times where I've woken up after a workout and I've got like what feels like an impingement in my lower back or my back of my shoulders aching. It's probably been because I've not spent enough time warming that muscle up, going through the joint movements and warming it up um, before I go into sort of those heavier sets or if it's jiu-jitsu, I've gotten to a mat, thought, oh, let's go, you know, I, I, maybe I was a bit late for a session one day and rather than spending those time warming up the joints and, and getting yourself ready, uh, you kind of just do a few press-ups, get straight into the session and, and then you only really feel it the next day when you're like, oh, yeah, I should have spent more time warming up. So that's one way. Accidents, that's I think the biggest way, that's how I put my clavicle. Uh, accidents happen, especially if you're putting yourself on the line. Um, obviously, if you're in the gym, accidents can happen, but that usually comes, I, I think, from, from carelessness. If you're taking yourself into a gym and lifting weight and you're being a bit careless with what you're doing, then that can obviously lead to injuries. But the reality is if you're doing a, a sport, that could be anything, rugby, football, martial arts, mountain biking, there are naturally going to be accidents that happen. Um, if you're on a mountain bike, I've done it before where I've, you know, I've gone around a corner too quickly, the bike's gone, the back wheel slid out, and I've got a nice hole in my shin <laughs> from where the pedal went into my shin. You know, you could be mountain climbing and, and you slip on something. Pure accidents that lead to an injury are, are unavoidable if you're doing those sports. You just have to be careful. But, I mean, if you're doing a full contact sport, be that rugby or anything else, Sometimes it's just out of your hands. Someone might tackle you incorrectly and take your leg out. In my case, I got thrown on the floor. It just happens. And then I would say the third thing is where you already have a niggle and you ignore it. So if you've got something like a bit of shoulder pain, and I've had this in the gym before, and you go, oh, it's all right, I should be okay. You know, I'm young, I'm fit, I'm healthy. It's probably just a bit of like muscle soreness, but it's not. And then you push yourself too far and something does go, that can be an issue you know if your body's already weak and you've not given yourself enough time to recover or you've got a little niggle that you're pushing off and pushing off you can push too far and then it can go and that could be anything that could be a muscle that tears it could be a rupture it could be uh, like i say it's not it doesn't tend to be things like dislocations but you can push yourself too far so sometimes it's best just to listen to your body so how to prevent an injury now i think this is probably one of the reasons why um, I haven't had that many injuries in my time is because I have put enough effort into the warming up. 
So if you are into fitness, if you're into the gym and that's all you do, warm yourself up properly. Whatever it is that you're doing, get the heart rate flowing, get the blood up, get get blood into those, those muscles, regardless of what it is. If you're going out for a run, uh, a common thing is your shins, is your hips, yeah? Uh, lower back even for a run. Make sure that you maybe uh, do a short, you know, ease yourself into it, don't just start running. Um, warm your calves up so that you avoid the cramping later on. Again, if you're doing, if you're going to the gym, make sure that you do a number of sets to to warm your joint up. Don't just go straight in and throw some silly weight above your head. And obviously, if you if you're if you're a sportsman and you do a sport or a martial art like myself, try and warm up appropriate to what you're about to do. But try and warm it up. So, for instance, um, if I know that there is going to be a session of jiu-jitsu that is heavily focused on joint locks. I will spend more time warming my joints up. You know, I will do sort of s some minor locking on myself just to get my tendons stretched and used to it. Because the last thing you want is to go into an activity, someone quickly bangs a lock on you and all your joints just go, whoa, and they flare up and it, and it goes on too quickly. Above all else, making sure that your warm-ups are specific to what you're about to do. That's really important. All right, so let's say that you have an injury. You've got to a point where... It could be an accident or you would not warmed up properly. Anyway, you have an injury. How to deal with it, how to recover. Now, it really depends on the severity of the injury, okay? If it's a, a minor thing, like I was saying, if it's a slight hyperextension of a joint or, um, you know, you've pushed yourself too far when you're running, you've got shin splints, uh, taking a little bit of time to change how you're working out but maintaining a workout routine is important. So for instance, I've done it in the past, especially in the summer when the weather's nice and I've really wanted to go out for runs. Sometimes I've just overdone it, run too far, too many times, too many consecutive runs one after the other, machines are screwed, okay? So I've pulled back and I've changed my cardio. So rather than going for a run, I've done a hit workout or um, I've done a few rounds on the punch bag that I've got or I, I move away from the cardio for a week and I do some more strength conditioning based work and it gives my shins the time to recover. With things like the hyperextension of the elbow, um, I've obviously bought straps and various other things that I can support. Same with wrists, if you've got any wrist issues, get supports for them. And try to strengthen the, the area. Now you don't want to do go too far, um, because obviously if the joint is already weak, if the muscle is already exhausted or is t torn or injured, the last thing you want to do is worsen that, but it is important to strengthen it up. Um, and I know that people that have done things like broken their wrists in the past, big part of the rehabilitation is strengthening up the wrist joint without putting too much pressure through where the break was. When I did my shoulder, obviously this was a little bit of a bigger injury and it did put me out because even things like running the movement, it really, it really irritated my shoulder. Um, so I basically did nothing apart from going on walks and keeping my fitness up in that regard. I did nothing um, strenuous because even small things, any movement of the shoulder, was just really, really painful and I wanted to avoid taking loads of painkillers basically. But for my shoulder, as soon as I could, I started to mobilize it. So as soon as I felt I was able to and it wasn't too painful, I would just move my shoulder in its socket, get my the tendons used to movement. Um, and then when I could, I would take my arm out of my sling and start my mo really small movements. Then when I felt I was able to, I would get hold of like a tin of beans or a small dumbbell. And it was just a case of slowly getting more movement in my joint, in my shoulder, uh, and starting to strengthen it up. And I think the biggest thing, and this was one of the reasons why I mentioned people can injure themselves, is to not rush back into it too quickly. So I started to teach jiu-jitsu again, uh, sort of a couple of months after I'd done my shoulder, but I tried to avoid doing any movements that required my arms to be above my head. So I did some striking patterns, and I did some movement drills with my class, rather than right guys, we're now gonna do a throw where we throw someone over our head like this because that would have not been good for my shoulder. So being smart, being sensible, and um, if you need to, going to a professional for help. So going to a professional for help can be really beneficial. Obviously, as I say, it depends on the, the extent of your injury. For the hyperextensions I've done, for the shin splints, for things like that, I've not obviously gone to an expert, and I mean like a physio or uh, a, a sports therapy massager or something like that. I've not bothered because it's something that I can deal with and manage myself. 
Um, for my shoulder, I did because obviously I had to go to A and E, and obviously that was all recorded. And the physio for the hospital sent me various details and videos to watch to help me with that. But the other thing is, is if you are doing something that is high impact or even just puts a lot of stress on your body, making sure that your recovery is there. So making sure that your nutrition is in place because that's obviously going to have a big impact on how well your body recovers making sure that you do things like hot and cold treatments if you need to, even if that's only direct. So when I had my shoulder issue, I was using ice packs, then I was using hot packs, and then ice packs and hot packs to get the blood moving and to help with the, the recovery of the shoulder. Um, and I've done the same thing if I felt that I've overdone it a little bit in the gym. If I've got an issue with my lower back, I'll go switch between using something like a heat pack um, to then going for cold press. And when I say about going to like a, a, a sports therapy massager, I've been, if I, you know, if I feel like I've got a lot of tension in my shoulders, I will, I've often put myself in to go and get a massage to, to just take out those knots. I've got a, I've got one of these things, all right? I know this looks a bit sus, but this is a massager that I can use to get into areas that I feel a bit of tension, okay? I, there are different attachments to it as well, and there are other brands available in different styles of massaging guns, but you can do things like that. If you've got foam rollers, you can foam roller. So read your body and um, take the relevant recovery methods that you need to. Okay guys, so there we have it. That is my take on injuries and that is my take on how to prevent injuries and how to recover from them. Everyone knows their body best, right? Everyone knows what their body is capable of. Everybody knows when they can push their body in certain ways, everyone knows what areas of their body they are um, stronger at and what, what areas of their body they're weaker at. That might just be a simple case of if you are going into the gym, I know for me this is a case, um, when I am doing shoulder work, I need to warm my shoulders up more, okay? And now I've actually got a bit more of a lump on my shoulder where the clavicle popped up. Um, any movements that require pressure on my shoulders, I need to be careful of because basically my clavicle now floats and so I have a lump on there. And so if there's lots of pressure, the clavicle moves where it doesn't on the side that didn't pop. So, you know, if there, if your body, if you know that you've got weaknesses in any area, it might be because you've had an injury there in the past, just make sure that you're smart and you, you spend a bit more time warming that area up before you get into your workout. Okay guys, so there we have it. That is today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a bit different. It's not me jumping up and down and getting all sweaty and sort of shouting at the, the camera. <laughs> Um, but I, I thought it would be a valuable video. I thought it might, would be something that some of you guys might benefit from watching. Like I say, longevity is key in this. We want to be healthy and happy for longer. We don't want to be rushing into things and injuring ourselves. All right, guys, I'm going to stop jabbering. As I said already, if you like the video, hit that like button. If you want to know anything else or have any questions about injuries I've had or how to recover, comment down below and I'll be a bit more specific. Um, and if you are new, hit that subscribe button. Go check out my Instagram down below and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.